Hello everybody and welcome. Today we'll be talking about gyroscopes. More specifically, how gyroscopes can be used to stop a rocket body from spinning during flight. Rockets have the tendency to spin during flight. This can be undesirable for a user who, for example, has a camera mounted to the outside of the rocket to record the surrounding landscapes. Now, the reason for using a gyroscope is because it only provides stabilization and not guidance. This allows it to bypass any legal requirements that would otherwise categorize it as a missile if it was placed inside of a rocket. What I have with me here is a gyroscope. You see here that we have a flywheel that is connected to a motor and is held in place by these two pivots. The reason for these packers is just to stop any sort of vibration. Now, these have a special property in which where the flywheel is spinning and a perpendicular torque is applied, a, a resultant force occurs in the third dimension. This can be represented with the right hand rule. So if a disc is spinning, my fingers represent the direction that it is spinning. And so my thumb actually represents the angular momentum. This also applies for the torque. So if the torque is applied perpendicular, it will be applied like this, pointed away from me. And so the angular momentum actually follows the torque momentum. So the disc will begin to spin along the third axis. So for example, we see here that when the gyroscope is fixed in the upwards position, the tube begins to rotate clockwise. We also see here that when the gyroscope is fixed in the downwards position, the tube begins to rotate anti-clockwise. So this resultant spinning is actually called the precision force, and it's given as the following, where R is the radius of the flywheel, M is the mass of the flywheel, G is the gravitational constant, I is the angular momentum of the flywheel, and omega is the speed at which the flywheel is rotating at. So the design is quite simple. It consists of a three-axis accelerometer paired with a microcontroller. When the accelerometer detects rotation, the microcontroller sends a voltage to activate a stepper motor. The stepper motor is connected to a rack gear, which is attached to a push rod, which applies the torque to the gyroscope, causing the precision motion. So we can see here that when the system is rotating anti-clockwise, the stepper is also rotating anti-clockwise. This results in pushing the gyroscope into the upwards position, which we know causes clockwise position, resulting in a stable body, and vice versa. So to put the design to the test, I created this testing apparatus, which consisted of having the rocket suspended and applying a constant rotation force onto the rocket via blowing on the fins with a hairdryer. This was due to not being able to physically launch the rocket due to COVID level 3 restrictions. This first test is with the gyroscope not activated. We can see here that there is a considerable amount of spin. This next test was conducted with the gyroscope activated. We can see here that the spin is still prevalent, but is reduced by a fair amount. Here we can see a side-by-side -side comparison with the one with the gyro on the left. Overall, I believe this design does show promise, however, it requires a lot of future work in order for it to be feasible. One thing worth mentioning is that this design is heavy, this will most likely deter most people, as this will greatly impact their rocket's peak altitude. One thing I noticed is that when the flywheel began to reach its max speed, the precision began to decrease. This is because, if we remember from the equation, disk speed is inversely proportional to precision. A possible solution would be to use a geared motor with a high torque output. And finally, there may have just been large losses of efficiency within the system. The most notable being the pinion and rack gear. During testing, I found that it would often get stuck. This is not desirable, as this means that the design is not operating at its full capacity.